welcome back. In our last episode, we talked about the history of observability and how tracing metrics and logs being kept in three totally separate siloed systems wasn't really the best architecture for building modern observability tools that wanted to look across all of this data and find commonalities to help us remediate our problems. So in this episode, let's forget about traditional observability for a minute. Instead, we're gonna go back to first principles and build a new mental model of observability from the ground up. Along the way, we're going to gain a deeper understanding of OpenTelemetry's new data protocol, OTLP. Let's check it out. So where do we start? We start with events. It's all about events. Things happen. And we care about these things. And we care about the relationship between these things. We also care about the patterns that emerge when these same things happen over and over and over again. Now, you might be asking, what's the difference between an event and a log? And the answer is not very much. In fact, in OpenTelemetry, we store logs and events in the same data structure. So when I say event, if you think structured log, you'd still be right. But events are not just floating out there in space. They happen in some kind of context. And that context also matters. How we interpret and understand events is almost entirely dependent upon the context in which they occur. In one context, something might look scary or concerning, but in another context, it might look fun and exciting. In other words, if we want to tell a story about something, we need to know how all the events involved relate to each other. So, let's define some of these contexts, starting with operations. Most events occur as part of a sequence of related events, all performing the same task. In OpenTelemetry, we represent these operations as spans. When one operation calls another, their spans are linked together, creating a graph of the entire transaction. This graph is called a trace. We use these traces to understand the flow of execution through our large distributed systems. Another context is the set of resources a particular program is consuming. Resources include information about the program itself, the name and version number of the service, for example, the machine or device, the operating system, things like that. Zooming in a bit, what about the libraries that make up that service? This context also matters. You want to know what code was causing these events to be emitted in the first place. In OpenTelemetry, this code or library context is called an instrumentation scope. You can think of traces as dynamic context and resource and instrumentation scopes as static context. Each transaction is a unique execution, but it makes use of resources and scopes that are being shared by many other transactions. Accurately mapping out this dance of independent transactions, all trying to concurrently make use of the same shared resources, is one of the primary goals of modern observability. This leads us to the final piece of our data puzzle, looking at events in aggregate. There are many different ways to find patterns in events, but the most common are what we call metrics. How are we going to record these metrics? OpenTelemetry does provide a metrics API, so we could do it using the traditional approach of writing metrics instrumentation and adding it to our code. But it's important to note that these metrics are mostly based on events. A 500 error is a thing that happens. That means there's an event with span, resource, instrumentation scope attributes available to create these dimensions out of. So, rather than write instrumentation code, what we can do is use these events and create our metrics on the fly. OpenTelemetry allows you to do this by writing a pipeline in an OpenTelemetry collector. This allows you to create new metrics without having to write code or restart applications. Given how many different ways there are to break a metric down, this is a really powerful feature. Okay, so, we want to create metrics to look at our events in aggregate, but we're also going to want to go in the opposite direction and look at our events based on our metric. Allow me to explain. Your metric, errors over time, is gonna let you know that there's a big problem, and the alert you set based on those errors is going to get you out of bed. But as soon as you're up, 
your first question is going to be, what the hell is going on? And in order to answer that question, you're going to want to dig into the trace data. For example, you may notice that all of these errors are coming from a particular service instance or some other kind of commonality. And in order to find those commonalities across the different traces involved in these errors, you're going to need to know which traces are actually generating these metrics. So how would you do that? You do that by something called a trace exemplar. A trace exemplar is a metrics feature that contains a sampling of trace IDs associated with a particular metrics value. So if you capture trace exemplars along with your metrics, you can then take your trace data and plot it on top of your metric data. So if you have trace exemplars, you can automatically find that information, which means a computer can do it for you. And there we have it, a complete rewrite of traces, metrics, and logs. We've gone from three siloed separate data streams to a single braid of data. Now, just to make sure it hits home, we're going to be extra explicit and concrete and go through the actual data structures one more time. So we have resources with a set of resource attributes, such as service name and service ID service version. Those resources then have instrumentation scopes, which have attributes such as the library name and version. Instrumentation scopes, in turn, contain spans. Spans have the span name, the span ID, the parent span ID, the start time of the span, the duration, the status of the span, plus any other attributes which describe the kind of operation that span is recording, such as an HTTP request. Those spans then contain span events, which have a name, a timestamp, and a set of attributes. Also in the instrumentation scope are a set of logs, which contain messages and attributes. These represent the events that may not be occurring within a transaction, but you still need to record. Also, instrumentation scopes have a set of metrics, which have the metric type and attributes and all of the data you would expect coming in through a metric stream, along with a set of trace exemplars. And that's it. This entire rewrite of observability is just this data structure. And this data structure is called the Open Telemetry Protocol, or OTLP. And it's going to provide the next generation of observability tools with the kind of integrated telemetry needed to build the workflows and automation that match our needs so much better than what we've had before. Thanks for watching. If you want to know more, check out my free ebook from O'Reilly, The Future of Observability with Open Telemetry. You can find a download link in the description below. Also, if you'd like to see more of these videos, please like, comment, and subscribe. I know that's a generic YouTube ask, but it actually really matters to me, especially the comments. See you next time.